I'm going to show you how you can put in um, cosecant, um, secant, and cotangent into your calculator because there aren't buttons that say um, those three on them. We just have sine, cosine, and tangent on the calculator. Cosecant is the same thing as one over sine. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. I remember that. Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you in that just a second. So I have uh, the secant is the same thing as 1 over the cosine of theta, and secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. And then cotangent is 1 over the tangent of theta. Okay. Um, so the way that I like to remember this, this one starts with a C, so it goes with an original S. This one starts with an S, so it goes with an original C. And then cotangent and tangent sound like they should go together. So that's how I remember what reciprocals go together. Now, when you're putting these in your calculator, so for example, if I wanted the cosecant of 70 degrees. Now, anytime that you're using your sine, cosine, and tangent buttons in your calculator, you need to make sure that you check your mode. So if you hit mode here, notice the third one down says radian degree. So mine is currently in degrees, which is what I want it to be. So I'm going to quit. Um, and then I'm going to do the cosecant, remember, is the reciprocal of sine. So in the calculator, I'm really going to type in 1 over the sine of 70 degrees. Okay. So in the calculator, I'm going to do the just the 1 divided by, and then I'm going to hit sine, and then I'm going to do 70 and close my parentheses. So then I end up here. I checked my mode already, so I'm okay. So I have 1.0642 when I round to the nearest 10,000. Okay. Now, if I wanted the uh, secant of pi twelfths, okay, in the calculator, I have to use the reciprocal function, so I'm going to do 1 over the cosine of pi twelfths. Now, this is in radians, so I have to go back to my mode, um, and I'm going to go down and hit enter on radian. Then I'm going to go back to my home screen, okay? and I'm going to do, just like we have here, 1 divided by cosine of pi twelfths. Now, if you have um, this calculator, you can also have alpha y equals, and you can see this numerator divided by denominator, and then you can hit enter, and notice it gives you the fraction line. Um, some of you may prefer to have it this way. So I'm going to do 1, and then I can arrow down to the bottom, and then I can do the cosine button just right there. Um, and then do pi. Remember your pi is the second and then the caret button. So pi and then just divide it by 12. So it looks like what we have on our board, I've got cosine or 1 over cosine of pi 12. So I should close my parenthesis and then I hit enter. So I get, uh, did I change my mode? Yes, I changed my mode. So I have 1.0353. Okay, so that's how you put that in the calculator. Okay. If I want to put cotangent in the calculator, so for example, if I want uh, the cotangent of 520 degrees, right, the cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent, so I'm going to do 1 divided by the tangent of 520 degrees. Okay, So, um, once again in your calculator, if you would like, you can use the alpha y equals, and then do the n over d for numerator over denominator, and you can do 1, and then use your tangent button, and then we're in 520 degrees. I need to check my mode though. I'm in radian, so I need to switch it back to degrees since we're in degrees. I know that I'm in degrees because I have the degree sign. Okay, So I'm in degrees, it's highlighted, so I hit second quit. Got my problem, so I'm going to hit enter, so it's negative 2.7475. And that's how you put sine, cosine, and cotangent in your calculator. Now, just so you know, um, when you use the second um, and then your sine, cosine, and tangent button, see how it says sine to the negative one? This functionality on the calculator finds the angle. So if you were given a trig ratio that you knew and you wanted to find the angle, then you would do this. So if I knew that the angle was... 5 thirteenths, or sorry, the ratio was 5 thirteenths, meaning that the opposite side was 5 and the hypotenuse was 13 and I wanted to find the angle, then I would do that and then I would know that the angle was 22.62 degrees. So that's the difference between those two. So this we refer to as the inverse sine, 
Okay. And that finds the angle measurement. And then if we just use the normal sign, it will find the sign of any angle measurement. Okay. Those are the differences between those. And that's how you find um, sine, cosine, and tangent on the calculator and what the inverse sine or inverse cosine functions do on your calculator as well.